Hello everybody, this is Mike and this is the first installment of Ask Mike. So today we are going to hear from Daniel. Daniel is going to ask uh, three questions. The way Ask Mike works is you first you go to askmike.thunderwizard.com and you select whatever kind of question you want to um, have with me. And so um, then what you do is you upload a five minute or less video. So no more than five minutes and you put your question. You can put multiple questions if you want. I may choose depending on the time to pick just one of them. But um, so uh, we are going to and then, of course, what I do is I put it up on the channel so that everybody can listen and benefit because these are great questions. And Daniel brings out some great questions because he has a couple of different um, experiences that seem to be slightly different than mine. So he wants to know my take on it. So he has three questions. His first question has to do with jealousy. Is jealousy normal with uh, BPD uh, partners? He wants to know uh, how I'm feeling. His second question is, uh, after I've healed, because I do claim to be completely healed, um, am I able to date now? And do I have to worry about these kinds of relationships? Can I detect them? And number three, uh, he says he wants to know about discard because she didn't discard him because according to him, he broke up with her. But he also says he'd get back together with her because she apologized. And so we'll talk about that. What is the final discard? What does it mean? What does it mean to be discarded even if you're the one that's doing the breaking up? So let's just go ahead and get started with his video and we'll listen to his first question, explain it about jealousy in BPD. So thank you again to Daniel for uh, the question. And I look forward to hearing and answering that question. So here we go. Hi there, Mike. This is Daniel, all the way from Sweden. Uh, I watched your channel for a while and it's been very helpful to me. Uh, I've just come out of a relationship with um, a three year long relationship with my girlfriend, who I believe was a borderline because uh, I, th I think she sort of fulfills every criteria on the borderline spectrum as described online and elsewhere. Uh, but that's just my interpretation and I'm no professional. But uh, the relationship started with a love bombing phase and then all of a sudden all the tantrums came and um, the, the, the intense mood swings came and, um, you know, I believe it turned into a borderline relationship. Well, my question was um, actually the problem of the relationship mainly was, uh, I believe, trust, but it was above all jealousy. And uh, early on, she showed signs of being extremely jealous and controlling of my uh, female friends, uh, totally innocent friendships with females that uh, uh, she reacted to strongly. And I think she was jealous. Uh, she believed everything was about attraction or flirtation uh, whenever someone texted me something truly in innocent. And she also analyzed my responses to them as, as flirtations, which was totally insane. And this escalated to the point where uh, she controlled everything and she even prohibited me from being in touch with my female friends. Uh, so this, uh, this was very dysfunctional. She came from, uh, she had trust issues. She had been abandoned by her parents or neglected, emotionally neglected by both her parents. And her uh, previous relationships had been very dysfunctional with a lot of uh, infidelity and, uh, you know, they were very short lived, etc. So I believe uh, it came from that direction. But I believe jealousy is something that you have never mentioned in your videos, but that was kind of the core of the problems in, uh, in uh, my relationship. So I was wondering, uh, is that part of borderline? Uh, or is that something else, like an insecurity thing on top of everything else? Um, so, uh, for example, your ex, did she react strongly if you had contact with other women during your relationship? Or is this a unique thing with, with my situation? Okay, thank you very much. All right, so that's his experience uh, with his borderline uh 
And this is a good question because it's true uh, that I don't often uh, talk about borderline jealousy. And so uh, my borderline, um, she expressed her uh, discomfort in other ways. She, um, she had been one of those people who uh, had, was in, let's say, you know, sexually fluid relationships. And so um, she actually had to put effort into her not cheating on me. She actually did, I mean, to her credit, she actually tried to be the best girlfriend she could based on her experience. She just didn't understand and realize that she had a mental illness that would kick in and completely destroy everything. So um, she just assumed that I wouldn't cheat on her. Uh, that I think part of that was her grandiosity because she felt that she was the most desirable, beautiful woman in the world. And of course, if she had you know, thought that I was you know, it depends on what somebody's definition of, um, you know, f faithfulness is. So mine was, you know, if I had, uh, you know, if I had wanted to, I might have been able to say, hey, let's have multiple partners and things like that. She might have been into that. But um, so you're right, my borderline, that her, jealousy wasn't her thing. But it is extremely common. I would say in my instance, that was a unique situation. Um, that the vast majority of borderlines are extremely jealous of every uh, uh, attention that you get. See, the other thing, you got to find out where their grandiosity lies. With my borderline, her grand, I, I added to her grandiosity because... Um, she would, you know, I was older and I'm this, you know, successful uh, spiritual teacher and et cetera, et cetera. So she could link herself up with that. And so if I got a lot of attention, in fact, she would take me out into public um, and to parties and sort of hide behind me because I, you know, I can, if I want to, I can entertain a room full of people. I used to be an actor and a comedian. And so I don't have a problem with that. And so she used to sort of put me in front of her so that she could go out into um, public scenarios. And, and, uh, and she, you know, she, by association, she could, you know, enjoy the attention. So um, that my situation was kind of unique. So yes, to answer your question, it is absolutely 100% almost guaranteed that your borderline will be extremely jealous of any potential romantic rival and um, be, you know, wanting to look at your texts and wanting to uh, examine everything that you say. And of course, they do have this fear of being abandoned. And here's the other thing. Borderlines, um, uh, t most of the time, not all of them, but most of the time will cheat on you. And you said that she had a history of being in relationships with infidelity. And again, you're hearing her version of it. And you've already seen that she can completely misinterpret psychotically. She can hear something you say and misinterpret it as something else. And then she'll go to somebody else and say, my boyfriend is having an affair and he's telling this woman in text that he wants to go down on her in public when you said something like, um, yeah, I'm going to bring uh, the work papers and I'll come downtown and give that to you. And she turned that into something sexual. So you can't take anything they say seriously. They're, they always will look on their exes as these horrible, abusive. So if she says that her ex cheated on her all the time, it may mean that she was cheating on them and misinterpreting. So the other thing is, this is true even with people who aren't borderline. One of the ways, it's not the only way, it's not always the case, just even with, you know, just people who are jealous and insecure. Um, but many times, if you're with a partner who has to check your phone all the time and has to check your email and wants to know who are you talking to and, you know, all of that, um, because they're afraid you're cheating, that's what cheaters do. So somebody who is a cheater, they can't tolerate that feeling and they can't trust you because they know they're not trustworthy. And so they project onto you their own guilt about their own cheating. 
So um, short answer to your question is yes, it is. It is absolutely normal. You're right. I never talk about it, but it is absolutely normal. And it is probably more you're more likely to have a borderline be completely jealous of every person you're with. I know a guy who married a borderline and his wife demanded that he get rid of all of his female friends. And um, yeah, so is jealousy with borderline personality disorder normal? Absolutely 100% completely normal. All right, so let's uh, continue. Uh, he's got a second question having to do with uh, his question about me, how do I feel now that I'm completely healed and uh, dating? So let's listen to that. Okay, my other question was about the future when you've healed and when you're moving on and dating new people. Uh, I'm very anxious not to end up in a similar situation with a similar type of person, um, considering... Uh, things went bad after a while in my relationship and I didn't notice these red flags in the beginning. Uh, as a healed person, do you notice these red flags uh, automatically? Um, or, I don't know, are you just simply not attracted to those people? Because in my world, I get attracted to people by the looks and the way they do. And then you, as you get to know them, maybe you notice something is off, but by then you might already have feelings for them. So I was wondering, um, how do you feel about dating people um, after having healed? D do things work differently? Okay. okay. All right. So how do I feel now in regards to my dating? This is a great question. So as you know, on this channel and uh, in my book, the which of course uh, I have how I survived my borderline girlfriend uh, that book I talk about not only what goes on in the borderline relationship but I also tell you exactly what I did to completely heal from the damage of that relationship and so what I mean by healing is this when I say that I've been healed it means that all of the trauma associated with the repetition compulsion, the, um, the trauma bonding, uh, you know, loop that you get into where your survival instincts uh, get um, infantilized because you bond on this very deep infantile level, which then connects your nervous system to the relationship and you then associate the relationship and the feelings that you have with survival. Then what she does is she pulls herself away either by splitting on you, getting angry with you, uh, devaluing you or discarding you, whatever it is that she does to you know go into the devaluation stage, that puts you in pause mode because now you're in trauma. It puts you in a, what I call a trauma pause and now you're waiting to be loved again. Right. So when I talk about healing, that process completely goes away. First off, you are able to completely bring closure to the relationship. This is why you must be complete no contact because you cannot get closure if you have no contact. But if you have just no contact and you're not doing the one thing, then you're on trauma pause and you won't have closure. But she will never give you closure ever. And no matter how badly she discards you, there will always be, always be this element that you're still connected to her. And in her mind, too, she will keep you in her back pocket even while she moves on and gets married and has somebody else. As you've seen, she talks about her ex. She talks about her ex all the time. That's a way of keeping that connection going. And, you know, if you choose to believe in energy and psychic stuff, as I do, because I've definitely experienced it. When they're talking about you to somebody else, you know, we're quantumly connected. You're going to feel it. And if you're on trauma pause, you know, as you're walking around, all of a sudden you have this feeling about your borderline ex that you haven't seen in a year. And oh my God, I, why can't? It's because she's talking about you or she's thinking about you. They'll never, you know, my borderline used to, used to bring up her Facebook and she would have all of her old, uh, boyfriends on Facebook 
and she would want to go over them with me and then talk about this and that. And sometimes she'd bring them up and say, yeah, but he still loved me and I feel bad that I had to leave him. My friends told me I had to leave him because, of course, she told her friends that, you know, he, he was stabbing her in the eyes with uh, ice picks. And of course, none of that was happening. So they say, well, my God, you have to get away from him. In fact, she even said to me once when she did this to me, she came back, you know, she, one of her discards was, I talked with my friends and told them what was going on. And they told me I had to leave you, that you're destructive. And then, you know, when she hoovered me back, we were talking about it. And she said, you know, yeah, I was, I was overreacting. And you know how friends are. They, they um, you know, they enable you. So they were telling me that I had to leave you, but they really didn't know what was going on. And, you know, I, we, you know, I shouldn't have left you. So, um, anyway. When you get healed, that connection that never goes away, even if you haven't seen him for decades, that connection gets broken. It's permanently broken. So in other words, they can't do their magic on you. They can't put a hex on you, you know, because you've broken the quantum link. And um, so you have to do that. That's the one thing will heal that. The other thing is that you become aware of what was really going on. If you have not put the, if you're still on trauma pause, you may intellectually know that she was abusive. You may intellectually know that she was projecting. You may intellectually know that you're projecting your mommy issues. You may intellectually know. You may nod your head yes when I say there was no real relationship. There was no real love. It was all both of your projections and uh you know, counter projections onto each other and your transference. And you go, yeah, I know that's so fucked up. But do you think she really loved me? Um, so uh, it's not what you think consciously. People, you know, come on here and they say education is the key, you know, and I'm studying this so that I can learn. Listen, all of that knowledge only has one purpose. If you become aware by listening to all my videos about what's going on with BPD and that it's a mental illness and that, that there's no, no real relationship going on, the only benefit that has is if you go, you know what, you're right, and I'm going to go do the one thing. But if what you do is, which a lot of people do, is they go, you know, I really love your channel, Mike, because you really educate me on all of this stuff. And now that I have this knowledge, I know better and I'm doing better. No, you're not. You're still in trauma pause mode. And this is part of the denial. Denial is when you're about to die. There's a bomb coming down and it's going to land. You can watch it coming through. You know, you can hear the bombs falling. Your denial kicks in and you say, I can survive this. I will survive. You are in, you are in denial mode when you say, I don't need to do the one thing. No, I know what's going on. Yeah, I'm getting better. I, I'm not out of it yet, but it's been seven months now and I'm, I'm a lot better than I was. No, you're in trauma, pause mode, and you are in denial. So... Healing for me is not only do I not have any pain associated to the relationship, I don't long for her, I don't miss her, I'm not angry with her. A lot of people say, I'm not angry at my borderline. Yeah, but you're still thinking about her. You tell yourself you're not angry, because here's the thing. When you're in trauma pause, there are two modes. You either love them and miss them, or you hate them and they're the, you want to destroy them. Those are the two modes. If you hate them and want to destroy them, if you, if you can't stand them, it means you still love them. Because love and hate are the same thing. Flip sides of the same coin. The opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is apathy. I have apathy towards my borderline ex. It doesn't mean that I don't have compassion for her. And it doesn't mean that I don't think how sad it is that she's that way and that I want you know, if I had the ability, I would give her whatever cure was necessary. It doesn't mean I'm going to get back together with her because I don't want to get back together with her. But I have compassion for her. But in terms of my feelings, I have no feelings. She's with somebody. She's not with somebody. She's alive. She's dead. She's happy. She's sad. It's not my problem. Uh, it's, it, and that is one of the results. If you are connected in any way, you, you still want them. You want to be their friend. You wish you could help them. If only you had the ability. I hate her, what she did to me. She planned it out. She's a horrible, evil genius. And I want her dead. I want to, I, I, you still love her. That's why your borderline still loves you. All of that hatred, they still love you. 
Love and hate are the same thing. So I, I have no pain and I don't think about her positively or negatively. Um, the only reason I think about her is because I do this channel. If I didn't have this channel, I wouldn't even think about her. Um, so if you want that, it's just not a problem. It's like, you remember when you got sick with the flu five years ago? No, you don't? Well, it was horrible. You were in bed for two weeks and you thought you were going to die. And then you got better and you healed and you completely forgot about it. That's what it's going to be like when you get healing. So how am I in dating? Um, well, a sense, here's the thing that happened with me is that uh, my fiance died. And then a year later, I met my borderline. And so I was still in tremendous pain mourning the loss of my soulmate, which uh, the normal, you know, mourning that comes with the death of a, of a soulmate. And so my borderline came along and then, you know, filled that hole and opened that up. And, and then I healed from that. But then I had time to go back and finish mourning for the loss of my soulmate. And so I spent another year finishing that morning up. Um, I've had uh, some, uh, you know, I've had, I've had my share of, of romantic interludes. I had, none of them were serious. Um, and to answer your question, a couple of them were borderlines. A couple of borderlines showed up and, uh, you know, started to go through the process, but I felt immediately the pain. You know, I saw the signs. I went, uh, that sounds a lot like love bombing. Oh, your mom was a borderline. And the, the pain and the discomfort. I remember on the second date of one girl that I dated, I said, you know what, I'm, I'm not feeling comfortable. I feel uncomfortable about this. And, uh, you know, I just, I just kind of need to, I don't know why I feel uncomfortable. And um, sure enough, you know, uh, after a couple dates, it became clear she was a borderline. So I still attract them, but I have the ability to see it and to walk away from it. And in some cases, I have the ability to see it long before it lands. And, you know, as soon as they say something, I go, OK, this is bad news. So to answer your question, yes, the healing will give you a, a bulletproof ability to not get into those, not get enmeshed in those relationships. And I did block both of those women, by the way. Um, you know, it went complete no contact once I saw what was going on. Uh, so there's that. Did I answer that question? So I talk on this channel, the one thing you need to do to heal, which includes going no contact. And I talk about it in my book, How I Survived My Borderline Girlfriend. All right. So let's get back to Daniel here and see uh, what else he has to ask. I think now he's going to ask um, about, okay, he's going to ask about, um, you know, was his girlfriend borderline because she didn't discard him? And then we're going to find out she actually did. She just didn't do it in the way that he thinks discarding has to happen because discarding can happen numerous ways. Let's take a listen. Okay, finally, uh, one thing you mentioned on your videos are the different uh, cycles or processes in the borderline relationship. Uh, one of them being the discard. Uh, and in my relationship, that discard never happened because I was the one breaking up several times because I couldn't take all the craziness and uh, all the, the abuse that I suffered. And, and I went back to her many times just because she said that she regretted everything and she would improve and things would get better and promised everything would be fine. And she learned from her mistakes, etc. That, that's why I went back. Of course, I realized I was codependent and addicted to the relationship. Um, but the thing is, I was the one who broke up and I also was the one who broke up this last time. She wanted to continue the contact. So how does that, uh, does that mean that she was not a borderline or something else on the spectrum? Uh, because in my view, that discard never came from her. Uh, or was it something more subtle? Uh, well, she never broke up in a way. So I was wondering about your theory on that. Okay, thanks. Okay, so thanks to Daniel for the questions. All right, so number three, he says that she didn't discard him. And then he describes because he broke up with her, 
But the great thing is, is that this is why these video questions are great, because if he were writing this out, he would say, she didn't discard me, I broke up with her. Was she borderline? But then we have to get the rest of the story. She, she hoovered him back. So uh, discarding is part of the devaluation process. Now, some people are passive aggressive about their discarding and some people are um, you know, direct. My borderline ex was direct. When she discarded me, she would say, this isn't going to work. I can't have anything to do with you. I, have a bad, I had a bad dream about you. I don't trust you. Uh, I have to break up with you because I talked to my friends about that one word you said a couple of days ago, and they told me that you're the worst person that, that's ever existed. I have to have no contact with you. Um, I'm going to leave you because I realize, you know, whatever the, you know, I realize that it's snowing in Canada right now and we're in Australia and that makes me upset. And so because of that, I can't have any contact with you. That's a direct discard. But a discard, it means that they're pushing you away. They're pushing you away and ending the relationship. So what they will do, and if you listen to borderlines, they will say outright that the discomfort of the intimacy of you being there and loving them is so frightening. The fear of being enmeshed and uh, absorbed and also the guilt that they have on an unconscious level of betraying their introjected mother who they really have to love by being with you, they're betraying their abuser and they can't do that. I watched that happen. I mean, it actually became a thing between my, you know, that was the last straw for me. So the fact that you were so damaged and so hurt means that she pushed you. She kept pushing you until you had to leave. So a discard can be one of both. A discard is that they end the relationship. My ex-wife wasn't a borderline, but looking back on it, had some pretty severe borderline tendencies. And we got a divorce. We got a divorce because uh, I ended up moving out. We got a separation and we moved out. And then she refused to talk to me. I, we, I think we were going to separate for six months. And I thought during the six months we were going to talk to each other. And, you know, I was going to be somewhere else, you know, on the other side of the state. Um, but then she said, yeah, I'm not going to talk to you until the six months is over. And I said, this is ridiculous. Let's get a divorce. She said, OK. So she made it in uh, just intolerable. She made it impossible for me to be in a marriage with her. So I said, let's get a divorce. And she said, OK. Now, after the divorce happened, I still walked away with the feeling that she destroyed and she pushed me away, which she did. Um, and, um, you know, she got, she monkey branched to some other guy almost immediately and married him, you know, a year later, something like that. So, um, uh, the fact that, she, that you broke up with her doesn't mean she discarded you. The other thing is, is that you didn't f say everything that happened because a breakup is a breakup. If you say she didn't discard me because I broke up with her, I'm going to think that you broke up with her and it was permanent, but it wasn't. You were still in contact with her and she apologized and hoovered you back. So it wasn't over. The relationship wasn't over. It wasn't even a, you know, her discarding you. It wasn't a final discard. Um, she wasn't done with you, but she still discarded you because she was so abusive to you that you had no choice but to leave her. And that's part of it. And then she could, no, be the victim. So some of them need to play the victim. And my wife did this as well. You know, she was so, uh, you know, for whatever reason, you know, she, abuse is too harsh of a word, but she was so um, challenging to have a relationship with. And she did go out of her way to make it impossible for me to be with her. And um, then, uh, you know, then she got to play the victim. She got to say, I tried everything with him and he just wouldn't give me what I needed. Here's what my ex-wife did. Um, we were having problems and it happened right when I made the decision internally to really commit to the relationship because I had been on the fence. 
And then I said, you know what, I'm going to completely devote my life to this marriage. And then immediately she started having all of these problems and started having all of these doubts and all this depression. And I wasn't meeting her needs. And she came to me with a list of needs. <laughs> I kid you not. She said, I have a list of needs and she needs like I need you to to greet me at the door when I come home from work. I need you to uh, be happy to see me and make me feel happy that you've seen me when you greet me at the door. You need to kiss me goodbye when I leave to go because I you know, work from home. When I go back to work after I've been at lunch. I need you to uh, take us on trips and I don't want to be involved in the planning. You have to make, you know, and all of these lists of needs. I mean, she made it impossible. I said, you, you know, these are requests and I'll do what I can, but you can't command me to do these things. She says, no, I have to have these. If I don't have these, this isn't going to work. So she made it impossible, but because I ended up saying, let's get a divorce, she could say, I tried everything and I came to him with my needs and he rejected my needs. <laughs> so just because your borderline is sitting there uh, crying in her Cheerios because you broke up with her, you didn't discard her. You were still in contact with her and she had the ability to hoover you back. But she pushed you away and that counts as a discard. In terms of the final discard, um, you know, we don't know her pathology, but, uh, you know, I could make the argument that the f final discard was her because you finally got so fed up, you couldn't deal with it. And that is still her manipulation. She did that so that she could play out, <laughs> you know, and she, of course she made up and he cheated on me and he did this and he said that and, I mean, and none of those things happened. That's a discard as well. Um, so it depends on, you know, their pathology. Are they passive aggressive about it? Are they aggressive? And so to answer your question, she, yes, jealousy is normal. Yours was severely jealous. And that has to do with their fear of abandonment and her projection of her unconscious desire to cheat on you. Number two, and you don't know, she might have been cheating on you the whole time you didn't know. Number two, how do I feel about dating after healing? I didn't answer that. I feel great about it. Um, I'm really looking forward to, I've been, I, I have dated um, and I have met with women, as I said, had some superficial uh, relationships and some of them I investigated and they didn't turn out to be anything. Um, but I'm really looking forward to finding my next wife or my partner. And I'm also perfectly happy being alone. I, I love being alone and living my own life. I'm individuated. Healing is not needing to be in a relationship and not needing to not be in a relationship. And I am in that state and I'm very happy about it. So um, I hope that answers your question. Yes, if you heal, you'll be able to date and you won't have to worry about is she a borderline and borderlines won't be attracted to you. And if they are, you'll be able to sniff them out and, um, you know, avoid that bullet. Uh, three, she did discard you. She just did it passively, aggressively. And you did not break up with her because you were still in contact with her. So for this to work, you have to go complete no contact, which means, as I said in my previous video, you make it impossible for them to ever contact you again. And if you want to know exactly how to do that, watch that video. And then you do the one thing that heals. I talk about that in my book, How I Survived My Borderline Girlfriend. You can get on Amazon, Kindle, and uh, Audible. And um, I talk about it on the channel. Put two seconds of searching onto the channel, and you'll see me tell you exactly uh, in video what to do to heal. All right. And uh, so uh, this was the first Ask Mike ever in the history. This will go down in the history books. And uh, I hope this was uh, helpful. You see how great it is now that you, you know, have time to ask your question and everybody gets to listen to it because there are other people with the exact same question you have. I love it. Let's keep doing it. If you want to uh, share your question with me, go to askmike.thunderwizard.com and, uh, you know, push the buy now buttons and follow the directions and uh, we'll make it work. All right, that's it. Thanks again to Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys on the channel very soon. Take care. Let's see, what do I need to do here? Let's do this. First, let's get rid of this. And then 
let's do this. All right, I want to end up with the, with the right screen. Ask Mike thunderwizard.com your question answered in a video that's it take care